Keeping a consistent temperature throughout your home will keep you comfortable year round and help you save money on your utility bill in the long term. This is how to do it all and today we're going to walk you through some DIY tips on how to insulate and air seal your home. So the three main tips that we're going to cover are air sealing the envelope of the home, sealing the ductwork, and adding attic insulation. These were chosen as our top three because they're common issues in American homes that can make the biggest improvement with the least investment. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell so you can be notified when we post a new video every week. All right, so first we're gonna start with air sealing the home. This will get you the most improvement with the least investment and it's absolutely crucial to air seal your home before adding insulation. Otherwise, you're kind of wasting your time. When we're talking about air sealing the envelope of the home, it's important to note how air naturally behaves in a building. The pattern of air in and out of your home is known as the stack effect. And it's essentially warm air rises and cold air dives. So warm air leaves your home through the attic and cold air comes in through a crawl space, unfinished basement, or other unconditioned lower part of your house. That's why air sealing the higher and lower levels of your home in combination with insulation are one of the best ways to fight air leakage. When a window is drafty, it's pretty obvious to the homeowner immediately, but leaks in attics or crawl spaces are typically worse, but usually hidden from view. And these are the areas that are gonna be most beneficial in working against the stack effect. So we're gonna show you how to air seal window trims, doors, vents, fireplace and furnace flues, and other things like pipes and wires that penetrate the envelope of the home. We're gonna start with windows, which often have gaps around the trim and under the seal. To seal these, we're gonna use a caulk gun. Cut the top of the tube at a 45 degree angle, use the pen underneath the gun to break the seal, and place the tube in the gun. Position the caulk gun and press the trigger as you go along the frame. The 45 degree angle allows the tip to give you a neat line as it's applied, but it still might need some touching up, which you can just easily do with your finger. And don't worry, the caulk rinses off easily with water. Next, we're gonna seal the bathroom exhaust fan and the floor supply vent. Again, using the caulk gun, go around the edges of the fan housing. The same goes for the floor supply vent. Use the gun and go along the edges and any openings and crevices. As far as air sealing a flue, instead of regular caulk, you wanna make sure that you're using the fire rated kind for areas that are more combustible to ensure fire safety. So for the flues, make sure the furnace is off and there isn't a fire going and you've let it cool off enough. And again, same method. Use the gun along the frame or any openings and wipe with your finger for an even application. Now we're gonna air seal the front door frame by adding weather stripping. A front or back door can have a little gap between the door and the outside that's letting not only light shine through, but air to come in. So we got a weather stripping kit that comes with everything we'll need. First, you'll need to remove any old existing weather strip from your door frame. And we're gonna install the left and right side of the frame first and then pressure fit the top. So we're gonna measure the right side of the door frame and cut the weather strip to fit. And make sure to cut it from the metal side, you'll definitely get a cleaner cut. Close the door and make sure it's locked before you install the weather strip. If it's not locked and you install the weather strip too close, you could put a lot of tension on the lock and it could break or come out of the wood. Line up the weather strip tightly on the side of the frame, but don't press too hard against the door. Using a drill, put the first screw in the middle and then do the top and bottom next. Now do the same steps for the left side and again for the top. And now there's a lot less light shining through the front door. Now for areas where there's a bigger gap slash opening or there's wires and it would be awkward to apply caulk, we're gonna use can foam instead. To use the can foam, you simply just need to attach the nozzle to the top and handle with care because this will not come out of your clothes or your carpet, trust me. Again, leaks in your attic or crawl space are the most important areas to address. So we're using can foam on openings around pipes and vents and crevices in our crawl space and the tops of the interior walls in the attic. We've also added a piece of foam board to the top of the attic hatch and weather stripped the trim of the hatch. If your home has a whole house fan like ours, sealing it up in the winter months is as easy as building a box out of foam board and can foam. Be sure to weather strip the lid of the box and this can easily be removed in the summer. All right, moving on to the duct work. If your ducts are leaky and in an unconditioned space like a crawl space, unfinished basement, cellar, attic, etc., you're literally heating and cooling the outdoors. So when you seal it, more of the heat slash air conditioning that was intended for your home will make it inside. Not only that, but sealing your ducts also improves your indoor air quality. If your ducts are leaky, the return is sucking from not only inside, but outside in either the crawl space, unfinished basement, cellar, it's literally pulling in dirt, dust, mold, and possibly radon. So sealing the ductwork allows the duct to only suck from air that's already inside the house. So to seal the ductwork in our crawl space, we're using a mastic sealant. 
This part is extremely easy to do. With a rubber glove, you can literally dip your hand in the bucket of mastic and spread it along the seams, joints, and holes of the metal duct work. Just be careful because metal ducts can be sharp in some spots. And last but not least, we're insulating the attic space. Like I said earlier, if you insulate the attic before air sealing the attic floor, it's kind of pointless and has a minimal benefit. Fibrous insulation needs an air barrier to work as it was intended, which is why we're doing this part last. When we're talking about insulating the attic space, it's important to note that the insulation and air barrier should be continuous and contiguous, meaning they touch. The continuous part is that it is more effective to have six inches of insulation everywhere as opposed to 10 inches of insulation in a concentrated spot. The contiguous part is that wherever drywall is, insulation should be touching it. If it's not touching it, for instance, the insulation is on top of wires instead of underneath it, the insulation will do nothing. Another thing to note is that you want to make sure there's no air gap between the layers of bats, which are the strips of insulation we're using. In other words, you want the insulation to be the same depth as the joists if you're using bats and not blown insulation, because otherwise there'd be an air gap when you add the second layer of insulation. And the first layer needs to be as thick as necessary, depending on the Energy Star recommended R value of your geographical location. All right, when insulating your attic, make sure you're wearing protective equipment and cover your skin, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, to avoid breathing in fiberglass or dust or getting it on your skin. So first we're gonna clean out the joist bay so the insulation can lay completely flat. Then put a bat of insulation in the bay and cut the length so it fits snugly. Try to cut the bat as perfectly as you can, but it's okay if you mess up as long as you fill the bay's depth evenly with insulation. So we had some leftover blown insulation that we used to fill some of the gaps. Then add the second bat layer perpendicular over the joist so that the wood is also insulated and not just the bay. And with that, we are done. <laughs> so the total cost of materials that we used for our 1,050 square foot home was under $200, but we did have some leftover blown insulation from the previous owner. So we took some before and after infrared photos to show the difference. The left shows the air leakage before we did the air sealing and insulation, and the right shows after. As you can see, these DIY tips can make a huge improvement in minimizing the air leakage and cold spots in your home. But if you do want a more in-depth professional opinion, you can get an energy audit done to your home to see what areas your house is lacking in terms of energy efficiency. And also, the U.S. Department of Energy offers a weatherization assistance program at the state and local level if you qualify as low income, over the age of 60, or families with disabilities. You can check your local utility company for more information. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up and check out some of our other DIY videos around the home. And again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next week.